let's uh let's do this speed cover video speed covers in classic actually comprise a whole bunch of different categories um we're really talking on the one hand either about putting a faster kicking wax on top or else a gliding compound to just increase the speed of the wax job on the other hand we might be talking about some sort of anti-ice element uh an effort to keep the kick wax a sticky wax like say the, the m26 or something like that from picking up ice and sometimes these overlap anti-ice and picking up speed can be the same thing but they kind of come at it from different ways the anti-ice thing with sticky waxes has always in the past been kind of addressed best by floral material either like a grip powder like Vauti or rex have had fluorinated grip powders um or else just a pure floral powder just sprinkled on. That's often been the, the way to go with clister. But liquids have also been good. Uh, Rex Hydrix was um, really developed as a, as a kick wax cover, even though it actually worked really well as glide wax as well. But some of the Vauti gels worked really well for anti-ice layering. My feeling about a lot of that anti-ice is that um, it buys you time for the wax to work in. A lot of times, if you get into that dangerous kind of sticky wax job where it's picking up ice or, or it feels like uh, like it's unstable, if you can get it through a couple kilometers of skiing and like work the ice out and stabilize the wax job with skiing, it becomes much more predictable and safe. And I think the anti-ice treatment tends to buy you that time without ruining the wax job by picking up tons and tons of ice. And, and what we're really talking about is a uh, is like snow embedded and not releasing and then picking up more snow and it doesn't have to be high heels it's just um it's just literally like a, a layer of ice on the skis it's terrible terrible because it ruins the kick and the speed so that's anti-ice usually addressed with floral material speed cover though that's that's just trying to speed up your kick wax so if you've got like really good kick with extra blue or super blue or something like that but you want a little more speed sometimes you can't get the kick from a colder wax job, but with that with that cold wax on, you can put on a shell of something fast that still gives you access to kick. And some products work better than others. What I want to do is talk really briefly about the speed covers we have the most success with, specific to floral-free conditions, because we're now we're not using any florals at all. And there's kind of two treatments we've come up with that cover speed covers and maybe some anti-ice properties as well. The first one is classic speed cover, and this has been a favorite for a long time since well before we uh, got into floral free. And this is this uh, Rhodey Alaska. This is a special edition wax. They don't, it's not really in their catalog anymore, but it's a favorite of Roger Knight, and he's importing the wax. And I, he just told me that he just got some more in, so I ordered another box of this from him. Um, we, we tested all the time. It made a really big difference up in Lake Placid a couple weekends ago. And it's, it's just good. It's, um, it's good specifically because it's quite friable. It, 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 breaks, it breaks easily and, and, and sloughs off in a really thin layer. It's not the hardest wax. It's made for fresh and fine grained snow at minus 15 to minus 30 Celsius. That's really, really cold. But honestly, I haven't had great luck with this alone as a kick wax. It tends to be a, kind of soft and slow as a kick wax, but quite good as a cover wax with a, th a thin amount. Most of these hard waxes, well, this one's not that hard, but most of these fast waxes don't go on over softer waxes all that well. And this one does, which is what makes it so magical. It can, it's really easy to put a thin layer on. I've got some roadie vice on this ski. Typically, if you're gonna do a speed cover, you're in colder conditions and your skis are gonna be quite cold and you wanna freeze the wax well, let it cool down and then do the cover on a cold base. Miraculously, the shop is not cold today. We don't run heat out here, but we've been grinding skis all day and that produces a lot of heat. So it's very warm and I'm too lazy to take the skis outside to cool down. So I didn't pick the stickiest of waxes. Rody Vice, it's like a Blue Range wax. Should still work to uh, cover, even though we're indoors at like, you know, room temperature basically. So the uh, the Alaska, you just kind of drag it on and, and you don't try to make it perfect, but this stuff is so, so easy to get a really thin layer on top of your of your kicking wax. And, and you do this on a complete wax job. So you, you get everything where you want, you get the kick where you want, and then you, uh, you cork out any moisture 
stabilize the base, warm it to get the water out because it's really hard to cover a wet base. And then just drag a super, super thin layer on like that. Very, very light pressure. And it's like a, yeah, it's like soft pencil lead. It, it just goes on really, really easily. And then you want a cork. This cork right here, this is a, a perfect cork. It's been used for years and it's all smoothed out. That's the cork you want. That's the cork you want for everything. And my wife and I have a disagreement. She likes brand new corks that just mash wax all over the place, but that's kind of her style anyway. She's a bit of a masher. I like a cork that creates a smooth surface. And you don't need a lot of, uh, you don't need a lot of friction. And you just, you just want to kind of cork it until the wax starts to disappear a little bit and really not much more than that. You're not trying to mix these together. And you shouldn't need multiple layers of this. That's really it. That's it. It's really, it's really got a, a, it's a very penetrable surface, but it's fast, much faster than the wax you're going to kick on as long as it's really thin. So that's it. Rhodey Alaska, fantastic speed cover. You should have it in your box. If we don't have it on our web store, I'll put it up. I know we've got some, but I've got another wax, uh, another uh, ski prepared with the vise as well. And this one, We've been working with this Star Next liquid, and I this this we're a couple of years into playing with it this way, and it's been surprisingly good. And in fact, we had this on race skis in Lake Placid. Once the Alaska worked really well, we tried using liquid on top as a speed cover, and it was better. The crazy thing about this is it's glide wax, and it's using this alcohol suspension to put a film of glide wax over the whole kick zone. I think it works a little more like that old school anti ice setup where it's buying you some time. It, it works for a while. My feeling is it has to lose effect over time and I haven't done durability testing. To speed up hard waxes and have the effect last for a long time, I trust the Alaska for a 10, 15, 30K race. To bring a dangerous sticky wax into play, like trying to get M26 to go on a on a dicey day, then I, I think the, the liquid is better using this a little more like a fluorinated cover might be more the thing. I made a dribbler out of this one by ripping the uh, the sponge off it. And what that does is I just don't have to load the sponge up with all this schmaltzy kick wax. Uh, I, can, I can just uh, shake it a bit and get a few little bits of liquid on and then just spread it out with your fingers. It's just alcohol with a little wax in it. And you don't do too much more. Just let it dry and go ski. And we've really seen no loss of kick. That's the surprising thing to me is that we're not losing kick with this. We've had success with the polar and the cold. Um, so far, those are the ones that have been best. Um, let it dry, go ski. Don't lose kick. Seems much faster. How can you lose?